Paramount is coming to the International Armored Vehicle Exhibition really at the suggestion of our customers. We started the company in 1994, and since then we've seen sales grow by 20% year on year. And eventually, as a result of the experience with our vehicles, our customers have been suggesting to us that it's time we expanded the database and exhibited the vehicles in a wider area than those countries we have been addressing so far. In particular, we've chosen IAV because we believe it's the best place in which to showcase our new vehicle, which is in Bombay. And Bombay is a multi-role, six-wheeled, infantry armoured vehicle capable of carrying out many natures of operations for both conventional and non-conventional war. The V-shaped hull has been used to mitigate blast from mines for many years, and it's been responsible for saving many lives during that time. However, the disadvantage of having a V-shaped hull is that it directly affects the overall height of the vehicle, because it's necessary to have a metre or so of ground clearance for the blast to be dissipated to air. The holy grail, really, of design is to maintain the same level of protection against blasts, while at the same time reducing the overall height of the vehicle. And that is the great breakthrough that we have made with Mbombe. By getting rid of the V-shaped hull, by the use of clever technology and smart materials, we've been able to reduce the overall target subtense, that is the height seen by an enemy gunner, and yet maintain the same levels of protection against mines and against blast. Because Mbombe offers protection against all of the main threats in a single package, that is against ballistic threat, it's proof to Stanek 4569 level 4, it's also proof against 10 kilos of mines underneath it, and it will take a severe IED blast against the side of the vehicle, and at the same time it has a much lower overall height than any other vehicle of its type and weight, it's perfectly capable of taking on operations, as I said earlier, in conventional and non-conventional operations. Therefore, it can play a main part in either counterinsurgency or in general war, because in general war, where the threat is mainly from artillery or direct fire weapons, the target presented by Mbombe is much smaller than those vehicles which are tuned specifically to counterinsurgency operations and generally are much larger because of the need for extra armor and the need for the mobility to carry the weight of armor around the battlefield. Paramount has put a lot of effort into getting the mobility and the levels of protection correct with all of its vehicles and not just in Bombay. And one of the main reasons for this is that as you are aware, Africa is now starting to take more responsibility for sorting out African problems. And this includes the provision of peacekeeping missions to deal with conflict in Africa. In the past, however, we have seen missions being put in place which suffer from either a lack of training, lack of numbers of troops, or in particular, insufficient vehicles with protection able to take the beating that they're going to get when it becomes peace enforcement rather than peacekeeping. Paramount policy is to provide vehicles which not only have high levels of mobility, but also provide as a basic mean the levels of protection to defend the peacekeepers against the main threats they are likely to meet, the AK-47, the RPG, and of course, mines and IEDs. The great advantage of Mbombe, as I have said before, is the fact that it has this much lower overall silhouette, and that it includes in the one package protection against all of the major threats that the vehicle and its crew are likely to meet, either in counterinsurgency operations or in conventional war. So we have no doubt whatever that the vehicle has a vital role to play in either of those scenarios. It will offer its crew added protection against direct fire weapons from the reduction in the overall height, and it will offer its crew protection against AK-47s, against Stanag Level 4, the heavy machine gun, and against RPGs and mines and IEDs in the case of counterinsurgency. We believe that most armoured vehicles in the future are going to have to take on diverse roles. There is no room, we believe, for vehicles specifically tuned to a particular nature of war. And Bombay can encompass all of these threats in a single package. This, of course, not only makes it ideal from the point of view of the customer, but it reduces the overall cost of ownership to him as well. 
the design of all the vehicles in the Paramount range has been guided by one principle which has been laid down by the chairman. And that is that all our vehicles must do what we claim for them. And that is they must provide protection, even in the most basic model, against the main threats that the crew and the vehicle are likely to face against the role that they are going to undertake. Now, uh, that means, of course, invariably the AK-47s and the RPGs we mentioned before. IEDs are becoming increasingly complicated and increasingly dangerous as the terrorists learn how to make shaped charges. All of our vehicles, however, will offer high levels of protection plus high levels of mobility, and they will do so in the most cost-effective manner. And we have done this so that African governments can put peacekeeping missions on the ground, can take part in humanitarian operations, knowing that their troops are so well protected that they will be able to defend the people they are called upon to protect without having to spend most of their time defending themselves. And that is an overriding principle. That has been moved on into Mbombe, and the principle will be taken forward to any other additions we make in our range. The clever part, of course, is on the part of the designers, because they are the ones who have to make the compromise to maintain those levels of protection without loss of mobility and without affecting the volume inside the vehicle to carry the troops and the crew. The Paramount range consists of a number of vehicles now. That is the Marauder and the Matador, both of which are extremely well protected against mine blast, and they come out of the design of the time when the South African Defence Forces was fighting in Angola. They were taking casualties from the mines, and it was essential that some means was found to defend them against the threat which could not be seen. An additional advantage of this, just out of interest, was the fact that the extra height given them by the V-shaped hull enabled them to see over the elephant grass, which covered a lot of the territory, and they were then able to spot movement on the part of the terrorists. The third vehicle is Maverick, and Maverick is an internal security vehicle but it has the same ballistic levels of protection as the other two armoured personnel carriers. So policemen sitting waiting to be called into a civil disturbance are going to be as well protected as their military brethren inside an armoured personnel carrier. And the fourth vehicle, of course, is in Bombay, the six-wheeler, which we've just discussed. Paramount has had the great advantage of starting the design of all the vehicles in its range with a clean sheet of paper. Other makers who have been in the business for longer than we have have in some cases been forced to make modifications to existing vehicles in order to prove them against the threat of IEDs or the threat of RPGs. With our clean sheet design, we have taken advantage of the work done by other people and, of course, the feedback we get from our customers because we now have a significant number of vehicles in operation in Africa and we know for a fact that operations in Africa are becoming increasingly like those operations which still dominate the media day by day. For example, in Somalia, the African Union mission to Somalia, AMISOM, actually is fighting a counterinsurgency operation, even though it may not be called that. So we are quite confident that our vehicles have a role. The fact that they are self-contained, they use a lot of commercial off-the-shelf components, particularly in the drive lines, makes them very easy to adapt into any kind of alliance or coalition force. And we are quite confident that these vehicles have a role, either as a force on their own in Africa, or as a force on their own as an entity used by a nation state in Europe or in the Middle East. As part of a coalition, they would fit in perfectly. There is no reason why they shouldn't since they would probably require less logistic support than the majority of their heavier brethren need to keep going.